Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Tammy Davis and I have a challenge for you. If you're new to my channel, hey, thanks, welcome. I appreciate you being here a lot. And if you've been with me a while and you're kind of like wondering what the heck is she doing with <clears throat> trans, just talking about all this emotional stuff as opposed to essential oil stuff, um, bear with me. There'll be more oils. I mean, there'll be more <laughs> videos on oils, but right now, um, yeah, I'm in the process of developing um, a book series um, and um, as the um, as a scribe for Mother Nature, that's the book series, and then as a scribe for Circe for All in the Pantheon. And so it, it all kind of interweaves. And that's part of the reason why I'm talking here, because as I dive into this information and write about it, it's fun to talk about it um, because there's just a lot of really cool stuff coming up. So the last couple of videos, I talked about discomfort in ourselves and being able to sit with that discomfort as opposed to trying to um, force anything to change, but just be okay with feeling chaotic, you know, finding um, stillness in the chaos and clarity within the chaos, right? Um, <clears throat> yesterday, I talked um, a little bit about what it's like for us to be with somebody who has shown up with um, emotional baggage, you know, and how um, triggering it can be. And so how can we sit with that level of chaos and be the safe place that um, people deserve? That's yeah, we deserve a safe space. And right now the world doesn't feel very safe. And so the only way to create sanctuary is to be a sanctuary. Um, and I realize that sometimes things happen that we don't can't tolerate. We don't want any part of it. But guess what? The sanctuary walk away. Sanctuary doesn't necessarily engage. Being a safe space means giving people the freedom to feel and think the way they do without us trying to fix it, change it, or control it. We can just step away. And so that's a real big aspect to being a sanctuary. However, today, like I said, there's an exercise because uh, all too often, I mean, I'm sorry, if you are a person, and I want to know this, if, if there is not a person on this planet that has anything negative to say about you, I want to know, I want to meet you because we all want to meet you. So if you are somebody who happens to have, um, well, you people just don't like you. I mean, not everybody, but you know what I'm saying? There's, there's a, there's a couple of people or it doesn't even that they don't have to like you, but you have negative interactions with. Okay. It could be somebody that you're friends with. It could be a family member. It so it's not somebody that doesn't like you per se, but somebody who has said something about you in a negative way. And in some way, the theme of their negative reaction is similar. There's a theme there. Okay, I want you to just pick one of those. Uh, the one that I have in mind is, um, you know, the um, the comments that I get um, with regards to I feel like I can't do anything right. I'm always in trouble, um, and kind of along those lines. And but instead of reacting to this. Because I used to be like, no, that's no, you know, that was like, that's not even, that's no, that's not even true. I decided to take a look at what is it about me? You know, what is it with me, within me that is in this, pardon me, I just wanted to fix this up a little bit, within this interaction that leaves this person feeling like they can't do anything right around me, the feeling like I'm, you know, being punitive. Um... Because when I think of that word, I think of um, a very demonstrative mother, right? Kind of like, no, that's not right. No, that's out of the, you know, that's a, that's in the wrong place. No, you know, put that back, put it over there, that kind of thing. So I just kind of started looking at this um, because the bottom line is my intention, honestly, with regardless of who I'm interacting with, is to be a sanctuary, to be a sanctuary within myself 
to have that sanctuary experience. And look, like I said, safe space does not necessarily mean I stand there and I get bludgeoned by somebody else's bullshit. That's not what a safe space is. I can walk away. All right. So at the same time, the only way we're going to begin to shift these dynamics on our planet, and, and it starts within our immediate tribe, the only way we're going to begin to shift and, and, and to eliminate or reduce those um, feelings, you know, of how we just, the reactions, to reduce the reactions, okay, to begin to empower these interactions, to learn how to respond, respond in a way that's in alignment with what we want to create, that's in alignment with our intention. So if my intention is to be peace and my intention or, and to experience peace and to be a sanctuary, then the, the only way to get there is to examine myself because clearly somebody who's being punitive, somebody who um, leaves another person feeling like they can't do anything right isn't a safe place. And so I started, you know, and I really started, and this is why well, I started really slowing things down. And I realized in our world, we have this idea that we can't slow down. There's no time to contemplate anything. We just have to go, go, go. We have to react. We have to be, we have to be ready to go, right? No, the body's already doing that. And this is what I talk a lot about any other, when I'm talking about specific health conditions, this is a reaction that the body is having to the environment. I've struggled with this for a long time, being able to distinguish the difference between a reaction and a response. And so this is it. <laughs> a reaction is immediate. Bam! You know, incoming information, poop. Oxidative stress produced, inflammation produced. Okay? Think about our interactions. And somebody says, well, geez. I can't ever do anything right around you. You're always griping. You're always whatever, right? You may, leaving me feel like I can't do anything right. I might as well just let you take care of it all. Typically what happens is, is there's going to be a reaction. Now look, they already had a reaction, right? But the only way to dispel that is to begin to respond. And a response is a point of awareness. The body, our chemistry, the DNA specifically, doesn't have the awareness. It's simply reacting to the information coming in. That said, the human being, the human mind more specifically, has that awareness. We can tell our bodies, hey, wait a minute, that's not an immediate threat. There's nothing really going on. That's just me worrying about something. That's just me having an inflammatory reaction to what somebody just said. So therefore, please don't produce the inflammation. I want to correct that. Just, 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 just rein it in. See, we have that ability to distinguish the difference between a reaction and a response and therefore redirect the system. Now, look, if it's a, if it's a real threat, like say you went through surgery or you, um, you fell and you injured yourself or you, you know, there was an accident of some sort, then the body needs to, then the reaction is necessary. The inflammatory reactions within the system are absolutely necessary for repair, for restoration, for protection and so forth. Okay, but if it's just simply in an emotional reaction, we have the ability to dial that down and now begin to respond and not trigger the body even further to produce more inflammation. So the only way to, not the only way, but a powerful way of slowing down the inflammatory reactions that are happening at the cellular level in our system is by pausing and responding and letting the body know that this does not have to be an inflammatory because you know what the, the truth is, is I mean if somebody's yelling in your face I mean and you yell back and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've done other videos about this but if you yell back it's just inflammation 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 okay it's just kind of it's there's what's what's the purpose to that what is it going to get any of you but if one of you has the courage to walk away and begin to um, assess a different approach, to assess what is going on in you that is having you react like this. And sometimes we don't need to know all the answers. You know, 
I can be really clear. I have no idea why I get to be, you know, I can be punitive. I don't know why. But the last thing I want to do is leave anybody feeling like that. I just, I don't. You know, I want, my intention is that people, when we interact and we meet, you know, if they don't like me, then that's cool. But I don't want them to walk away, walk away despising me and thinking I'm, you know, batshit crazy or anything like that. I just want them to walk away and there just be a safe space between us. See, that's my intention. And see, the more we can begin to do that with one another, the less division there's going to be because we're not going to be picking on one another. Um, I mean, in all honesty, when it comes to me um, being, I guess you can say belittling or demeaning or um, um, voicing um, disappointment, that's a good way to say it. Voicing my disappointment, well, how come you didn't know that that was supposed to go there kind of a thing? That's disappointment. So if I'm projecting disappointment onto somebody else, that means I'm disappointed about something within me. And so therefore, I started examining that and being really, really clear. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm aware that I can do that. And I'm aware that there are certain aspects of my life that I am disappointed in. So how can I begin to find the glimmer? You know, I had an inner, I had um, a possibility of um, aligning with uh, a local business and she shook my hand and said, I'll talk to you next week. Well, that was three weeks ago. You know, my head went, see, she doesn't want to do anything with me. She lied to me. So I just assumed that the deal was done. And then I was reminded today she didn't close the door. She just hasn't contacted you. So put something together and contact her back. You know, see, so that negative, so feeling disappointed about that. What's the point to that? Don't be disappointed. You know, I, it's time for me to show up instead of just slipping off into the, you know, into dark, darkness and despair. And then when I am in darkness and despair, what can I do? differently. And it's in that darkness and despair, believe it or not, that I actually heard that little voice in my head going, you know what? She hasn't closed the door. You have every opportunity to generate something with her now. So, but, but there again, I was also, you know, verbalizing disappointment, projecting disappointment onto somebody else because I couldn't deal. I wasn't dealing with my own level of disappointment in me. So these are the kinds of things that I'm talking about that if we can begin to, and it takes practice, you know, and if we, if we screw it up one time, we can always go back and try it again. This isn't about getting it right hundred percent of the time. This is the willingness to shift, just to shift the way we interact with people. And what would be the intention for you to shift? I mean, if you have stellar relationships, then Oh my gosh, that's great. But if you have a couple of relationships where it's kind of rough, you know, and, um, and nothing, you know, there's just, you know, and, and, and that's just it. We have these relationships that things get rough. And the first thing we want to do is we want to run. Okay. That goes back to the video a couple of days ago, that discomfort. Now, look, I'm not staying, I'm not say I'm not suggesting that anyone stay in an abusive relationship. Okay, that's not what this is about. If you're in an abusive relationship, I'm going to strongly empower you, encourage you to please seek help, seek shelter, take exquisite care of yourself first. And if that's not an easy thing to do, then please start le reaching out to people and creating those connections that can support that transition. And in the meantime, for those of us who just have kind of rough, abrasive relationships, maybe because of, um, you know, work or, you know, siblings or, you know, whatever, you know, coworkers. I mean, I've worked in plenty of offices and sometimes you just kind of wonder how anybody even gets, that they're even under the same roof. Um, so exam, I mean, cause, and so we all come together and that's going to be my video tomorrow, which is a, you know, is going to be an, um, a segue. In, this is a segue into that. Um, 
but in the meantime, it's, it's beginning to look at ourselves and how are we being, how are we showing up in this dynamic that would have us go, you know what, I'm just going to quit. You know, too many people quit their jobs because of the dynamic between they and their boss or they and a co and a coworker. But we're not taking the responsibility for what we're bringing to that relationship. And so that's the point to a couple of days ago. That's the point to this one. How can we begin to empower that difficult relationship to actually learn about ourselves? You know, there's no sense in running away from it because it's going to occur again. Same soup, different bowl. Okay, so maybe the time is now to begin looking at these rough work-related relationships, um, or sibling, rela- you know, or family relationships. Something that it, you know that might not be um, where you would like it to be, and instead of ignoring them and avoiding them, and you know, or um, quitting, just step back, be a sanctuary to yourself. Allow yourself the space to just to kind of process and what is it about you and see how things unfold. See how you can begin to shift the way you relate to that individual and see how things might um, improve. All right. So, yeah, you guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I love you and um, hope you're having a great afternoon. See ya.